That's my number one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just so much fun. And it six level is a big ask. Sure but, is. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're breaking down our picks for the top five and one worst level six sorcerer spells. Huh, this, what do you think of this list? Worse than all of the others. This was like, cause I feel like the last five of these we've been like, oh, banger after banger. Man, there's so many good spells in the sword. And they got, I got here, and I was like, oh. Well, that's making my top five, is it? I guess yeah. everyone can't be wizards. Um, I don't know. I guess there's one one spell that I picked that could be meta magicked effectively. I think I'm in the same boat, which is not a great sign. No, but um. So this is pro. I, I didn't go look at the sorcerer I'm at the wizard list I picked for level six, but uh, that's probably it similar. Oh, also, yeah, I would assume the same is true for me. Also, we recently talked about one of the spells I'm going to talk about. Um, and I am bummed that it's on my top five. I actually was hoping there'd be more powerful things than it here, but there isn't. Uh, so I guess we're going to dive in and see what's what, you know? All right. Well, let us have it. What's your what's your first pick? My number five is a spell I never thought I would talk about like that much. It's Globe of Invulnerability. <laughs> it creates like a bubble that prevents 5th level or lower spells from breaking in. Now, there's a very big issue with this, and that is that this is on the Sorcerer class, and they get a single spell when they level up. So, like, you'll go from, what is it, ninth to 11th level, you'll attend to 11th level, and you'll get your first 6th level spell slot, and you'll be like, okay, what 6th level spell do I want? And the answer, I don't think, ever should be Global Invulnerability, but Global Invulnerability is the kind of effect that, in some fights, can be useful, can be very powerful. Um, Because it, you can... Put it up as a barricade from counter spells if you're going to be in a counter spell war against some other creatures, and it's yeah. kind of like a, a thing they have to deal with if they want to use magic to in, impede you in some meaningful fashion. So, like, it can be a useful effect to consider putting on your sheet. I don't know if I want my only loan, known spell to be it, though. I do think it's probably going to be more useful than almost all of the other options, or the other options I picked above it are just going to be better versions of said other options. Um, yeah, you might be right because I I picked a lot of well, let me double check before I say that. Uh I feel like I picked a lot of um um damage spells, mm -hmm. which I didn't really want to do, but uh Globe of Invulnerability does something different, which is nice. And like when you're at this tier, you do have damage options. You have upcast yeah. fireball, you have upcast right. lightning bolt. And that's going to be as good as a lot of these kinds of effects. So it makes non-damaging effects that do a new thing kind of relevant and important, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Globe of Invulnerability did not make my list. But I do feel pretty confident that I actually have an order this time to my oh. picks, which is unusual. I, it's just like I had a, I had a, a number one favorite, mm -hmm. and I had like decreasing interest from there <laughs> <laughs> so it's the spells you're least interested in as your number five well uh, most fifth most interested in i should say yes okay fifth least less interested sure all right double negatives are wonderful ways to describe <laughs> anything yes all right uh my my number five is mental prison Mental Prison did not make my list, but it was close. I thought yeah. about it, and then I was like, oh, wait, a spell on my list does, just, does this effect, but better. Okay. Add a crunch yes. of numbers, but uh, it's close. So, all right. Damage spell, yes. Possibly uh, a banishment kind of spell as well, if your target so chooses to stay in their mental prison. If sure. not, it's a bigger damage spell. Yeah. So. That's very notable about it. Um, this also might I mean, deserve nothing, over the spell I picked. There's, Go ahead, sir. I don't think there's anything that's keeping you from like forcing them out of the prison and just forcing them to take the damage, right? Uh, if the target is moved out of the illusion, yep. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, if you dealt with everybody else and you don't feel like waiting around for the rest of the duration, then... Yeah, there's that option, I guess. 
other huge thing, um, you can twin this. That's that's what this is my one twinable spell. Yeah, I think this probably deserves it over my one twinable spell. I will give you that. Um, I having just double checked the damage numbers, this is probably more reliable and is going to do. It presents an interesting problem that neither outcome is good for the enemy team to such a degree that I think I'm usually fine giving them the prompt, right? Normally, I don't like effects where the enemy gets to decide which of these two outcomes they get, but I think I 15 do. d10 damage and 5 d10 damage, and you also don't get actions, like, those two things I find to be both acceptable use cases if I were to want to cat, like, if I'm in a scenario in a regular combat, right? Yeah, see, that makes me feel like the mastermind. Mm, yes, you yes. choose your doom. Exactly. The form of your destructor. Yeah, this this was a good pick. I like this pick a lot. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna pick one right, that I know is on yours. Is my number four. It's scatter. That's my number one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just so much fun, and it six level is a big ask. Sure but, is for yeah. just teleport. <laughs> but I actually ahead. think it's a disservice. Look, it, it it should be my opinion on this is that it isn't that good, and that. It probably wouldn't make my top five on a lot of other spell lists, but it has to here because the rest of the Sorcerer 6 levels are just not it. No. Um, so, like, I don't I don't want to spend my only six level spell note on a cool teleport effect, especially if I have any cheaper option than this. And usually with teleportation, you want it to be cheap. You want it to be lower level so that you can use it more flexibly and not feel like you're spending a big resource for what boils down to functionally just movement. So, like... I tell the, I think teleports get marginally worse the higher level they are. Still, that being said, this does a different kind of teleport that has more use cases because it can teleport multiple things in interesting positions and directions. And that yeah. all makes this at least a unique and interesting and definitely fun pick to play around with. Yeah, it's versatile in that you can use it guaranteed on you and your party out of combat or, or even in combat if you need to get you know on the other side of a wall or something. Or... Uh, or against your enemies, if you want to shove them all inside a uh, sickening radiance. This is true. Which, uh, this has, is also... which your druid friend has placed a plant growth on top of. Yeah, they just everyone it has a big team high five, Captain Planet style. Uh, you know, it's great. It's like the after school special that we all read and loved whenever everyone worked together perfectly in harmony and no one ran I'm off. Sure, and... I'm sure Captain Planet would, would really appreciate plant growth and uh, sickening radiance together. <laughs> absolutely that's just a, a recipe to create fallout actually is what that is a recipe for so um notably i wanted to point out this does work actually kind of fun with distance spell because it's one sorcery point to double the range from 30 feet to 60 feet oh. and i do think that is a notable upgrade for this kind of effect because you are teleporting them to a space within 120 feet of you still um but you can do it when they're 60 feet out which gives you kind of a uh, like 180 foot teleport if you need it right because like you can take someone from 60 feet back and launch them 120 feet yeah. forward that's kind of novel um so you know i just figured i'd point that one out too yeah that's great good all right well, i've got two that can be meta magic then yeah so far so oh yeah you're up next all right what do i have uh freezing sphere is my yeah, number four that's my number two wow i like this little spell yeah, it's like just... a mid-tier option, though. All right, so what do you, so what do you like? I mean, what what is the text here? It, it does cold it's damage fifth level in, fireball a, in a damage. huge area. Yes, it's a fifth level fireball damage in a ten foot larger, or sorry, uh, forty foot larger radius. No, so no, it no. hits sixty everything. foot radius. Yeah, so normally a fireball is twenty foot radius. This is a forty oh, foot right, larger yeah. radius than that, right? So it take it. You're trading a d six damage for the enormous added range. But also a cute little trap effect that I find really endearing, right? It's the same reason With I kind of love. Thing? Yeah, where you, you can make it a little globe and you can leave it places and then it explodes when people shatter it and stuff. Oh, and yeah, that's, that's what uh, that's what made me uh, actually put this one in here. Because I was looking at Circle of Death and I was like, all right, that's another enormous 60-foot radius damage spell. That <laughs> When am I going to need that big a radius? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got to Freezing Sphere. Same thing, but yes, you can you can set a little trap. You can set your little pellet down, and uh, hey guys, come over here. You can put your Bugs Bunny dress on. Yeah, the wig and all. Uh, fun yeah. fact: Did you read the range on this thing? It's huge, three hundred yeah. feet. Yeah, 
and you can double that if you really wanted to. <laughs> All right. You said you really, you said you would take a spell that does two damage if you could fire from a mile away. So I think that should be like a real thing for you. It's like oh, this goes from yeah. anywhere. I like I like the spell in that it is at least while it is just damage, and some novel like once or twice a campaign maybe you care about making a giant thirty foot cube of water. But most of the time it's just damage. But it's damage that is just different enough that you can come up with some clever and cute ideas for it that, like, it's the minimum of what I ask out of a damage spell. The larger radius is a perk. The larger range is a perk. But for the most part, this is just a, an upgraded damage spell with some niche extra applications. And I think that's fine. I think that's entirely I'm, serviceable for people that mainly care about damage anyway. I'm not sure if the area is a perk because that's almost guaranteeing you're hitting your entire party as well as the enemy. You could like shove it in a corner somewhere. It's fine. Yeah. D and D is really easy to sculpt these kinds of effects. Yeah. Uh, call out the short circle of death does have half the range, two d six less the damage, and no other upsides. Yeah. So that's fun. All right. Uh, was that my? That was my pick, right? It's your oh turn. yeah, I'm on deck. So I this is one I think I would agree. Mental prison is better than and should have this slot. I put disintegrate here. I did not put disintegrate on my list, and I, I I did consider it. I looked at it, but I don't know, just something about it. Even we recently did a disintegrate uh, video, mm -hmm. and even though I came up with a bunch of fun ways, you know, destroying objects, chunks of rock, bridges, whatever, I don't know. I couldn't bring myself to put it on this list. I think that mental prison is going to do its job about as well. Uh, if not slightly better, just because it always will do a minimum of 5d10 damage. And yeah. I do tend to want, like, if I cast a damage spell, I want damage out of it. Um, there's a very high risk to disintegrate. Also, fun fact, the floor on disintegrate is, uh, or sorry, the ceiling on disintegrate is lower than mental prison. Because if you want just damage and can guarantee, and, like, the thing has to either move or wait for your concentration to break, I think there's a real chance that, like, you'll get the 15d10 damage, 15 D10 damage, and that's 85 damage, versus Disintegrate's average of 75 damage. So we're looking at raw damage output numbers. While Mental Prison, you have to jump through some hoops, you have to maintain concentration, there are hiccups there. Like, like if you if you already have powerful concentration effects you like, I think Disintegrate probably solves the damage roll better. But if you don't have concentration effects you like, or you're okay casting this kind of effect when your concentration breaks, I think Mental Prison should probably serve... About as good a job, if not a slightly better job, than Disintery it would. All right. I'd advocate for one uh, or the other. I think they're both close. I think Mental Prison yeah. is probably slightly more consistent, which is why I think it deserves the slot, but I picked Disintery ahead of time. Figure I'd talk about it. Great. Also, um, yeah, go watch our... Hmm, what? You can twin oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Well, that's a big deal. But you yeah. can twin the other one. You can do, twin uh, Mental Prison as well. Mm -hmm. All right. That's... Uh... Yeah, go watch our disintegrate video. Good times. That was the reason. What else do I have? Ah, I another fun one. Uh, flavor and fun. I picked Sunbeam. I just don't see it for Sunbeam. I think yeah. that, like, specifically for sorcerers, because of how sculpted your list is, like, I don't see there being real windows where I want to spend my really baller spell selection that I've cultivated not being used. Like, I don't see a lot of times where I'm going to have enough encounters where I'm happy to use Sunbeam for one of them and not the entire rest of my spell list that I'd rather be using as my action. I think is my ultimate problem with Sunbeam for Sorcerers. Right. I don't clerics, understand Clerics, I get it a little about. bit more. So, okay, so if you cast Sunbeam, you should beam. Is Sunbeam... Is Sunbeam the one you can fire multiple times? Am I crazy? Yeah, it's uh, like concentration for a minute, I think. Yeah, and it does, it does, uh, what's the damage? 68 radiant damage lines, right? And blinds okay. things. So I think sorcerers, whenever you're setting up your character, are going to have a wide variety of very, sorry, not the exact opposite, a narrow list of spells that they want to consistently and always cast with metamagic. Sunbeam doesn't really work with metamagic mm -hmm. and takes your action over and over and over and over again in combat. I think your actions in combat as a sorcerer are already going to be better than that most of the time to such a degree that you would rather just do those things than cast this every round in combat. Like what? 
like twinning ice knives is a really easy oh, place yeah. to start, right? Like I think you will have no shortage of third level spells like fireballs to throw off. You're not gonna have any short level sh- shortage of fourth level spells that you want to cast. You're yeah. gonna have other concentration effects that you're gonna care about. To want to use Sunbeam, you actually have to say for this encounter for three to four rounds, all I want is every turn to be a 68 damage radiant lined up lines. And I think that can be fine, but I don't think most sorcerers are going to be in the market for it. I think clerics are a little bit, I'm a little bit more compelled to agree could want it because their spell selection is a little bit weaker in terms of putting damage output down. They have a little bit more of a supportive list. They have a wider variety of options they can compare or prepare. For a sorcerer specifically, I'm like, you definitely have better things to be doing as your action than this every round. You yeah. definitely have better things to be concentrating on. I'm surprised, uh, you know, I know how much you like lines. I do love lines. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Sunbeam, that's the, it hurts, breaks my soul. It's not my worst by any stretch. You can have fun with it. And they're long lines too. They're 60 feet. Yeah, 60 feet. It, you know, decent damage, uh, repeatable. Um, and uh, yeah, the blind. That's, yeah. uh, I think that's fun. I agree that it's fun. And I think if you like the spell, you can probably have a good time putting it on your sheet. I just think a lot of characters that are very much so built to do a thing don't want to be doing this different thing. Same with the investiture cycle, right? Like I don't think those care. I don't think those options are going to be that impactful. This is definitely better yeah, than I those, for the record. Yeah, I didn't pick any of the investitures. <laughs> yeah, this action is actually but, uh, a good action, like a, almost comparable to third level spell action. So it's unfortunate that uh, it doesn't really work with any meta magic. I guess I guess you could extend it, but I mean, what most uh, fights aren't lasting beyond a minute. I don't know if that's true, but it does say self parentheses sixty foot line, so maybe. Wait, it depends wait, on how the range for oh, distance oh, right. spell works. What's the one? Is there one for duration? I thought I was. Uh, oh I thought yeah, that's you can double the about. minute duration, but who gives a shit right. about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the point I was making. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> um. All right, sunbeam. I like it. Yeah, it's fine. What else uh, do you have? Topping my list off is my number one, and it was my top of my number two, but without the mass. It's mass suggestion. That's suggestion, my number two. But yeah, it, it's a baller spell. 12 people. 12 people, 12 so creatures. many people. It lasts yes. 24 hours with no concentration. There's just so many things. Oh my god, everything makes a whiz save. It doesn't care if you're in combat. Like, you just go, hey, everybody, this is what we're going to be doing for the next 24 hours. And they just listen to you. Or at least a lot of them listen to you. Yeah. It's it's so it's one powerful. Of those, it's one of those, you know, save or die. But with multiple targets... Some of them are going to uh, fail. Yeah. And you this know, will, I love that. This can double as a, a mass banishment. This can double as a mass, like, mind-controlling cult kind of cultivation tool. It has upcasting that's genuinely really fun where it can make it, like, world-building applications make it like, oh, it lasts a year? Sweet. I'm just going to mind-control <laughs> this town every day for a year. And then eventually those 400 people or whatever I spent, you know, a couple months controlling over are just my servants. And they'll just do what I tell them to. And people stop for, start to forget when their time expires. And they forget when their friends' times expire and everyone wants to stay in line. And then you build a cult of fear. It's a big, cool world-building thing for an evil lich villain that's not really player-driven at all. But still, if you, as just the sixth level there version... Are, yes. <laughs> there, there, I mean, there are scaled-down things you can do as a player. Yes. Oh, man. But yeah, even just the floor of it. The floor is... In so- combat. All right. Guess what? 75% of my enemies are now on the ground doing push-ups. I'm going <laughs> to deal with them, and then I'm going to come stab each of them one by one. I love, like, the conceptually, just being like, all right, you 12 on the ground, give me 150,000 <laughs> push-ups, and then you just fight the encounter and then come back to them later. <laughs> yes. That's really funny. <laughs> mm, I mean, I that's, how, that's how I feel about uh, fear. Yeah. I mean, you can you can take their stuff here too. You could. You can also yeah. tell them to run as far as they possibly can away from this location for twenty four straight hours. <laughs> I love uh, that. Well, like, if you upcast well, that right, to does, ten days, they are just gonna have a very is, bad time. Is exhaustion a harmful effect to themselves that they will not do? Um, uh, I'm guessing. I would say there probably becomes a point where if they can no longer continue the course of action where it, it doesn't cause harm any longer, the spell ends, right? Is how I read yeah. that, right? Yeah. So, like, do 150,000 push-ups. They'll do however many they can before they are they physically damage themselves from exertion. Yeah. Ah, well, there you go. Good you could times. also just, like, 
weave in words like take rests as needed. Yeah. There you go. Now your suggestion works as intended. Well, I was intending to wear them out. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, that like I said, that's the floor. It only yes. gets better from there. You can upcasting it is I mean, yes, if you want them like if you just want to kill them, you can do what I said. But if you want to use this for something more constructive and useful, yeah, you, you know, build me a castle. <laughs> Get to work. It, snap, snap. There's even like a minimum right where if you know there's an event happening, right? Like you need to go to a big gala. You need to go to a, a big Senate vote or something like that. If you can mm -hmm. find the people you're looking for within a day, this is a six level spell still has huge plot and world or like, like planning applications where it's like you 12 are doing this course of activity for 24 hours. That can be yeah. really, really, really or helpful. Just, you, know, you are going to vote on this initiative. Exactly. Or like, you know, the six of you are going to plot and attempt to assassinate that man. Yeah. As long as it's not bringing itself to do harm to itself, you're good to go. Yeah. That guy's just a big fat politician. He's not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. His guards might. All right. Well, that was a mass suggestion. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, well, and others. So what, what was your list again? Mass suggestion, breathing sphere, disintegrate, which should be mental prison, scatter, and global vulnerability. All right, mine was pretty similar. I had scatter, mass suggestion, sunbeam, freezing sphere, and mental prison. Two breaks, nice. All right. Now, for the worst. There was, there was a pretty clear winner for me. I think so, too. Shall we say it's in like unison? Pretty okay. abundantly clear. It's flesh to stone, right? Flesh to stone, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it, it's just horrendous. Like six level we just, spell that does nothing. We just talked about a twelve person restraint, and this is a yeah. one person restraint that takes your concentration. No, thank you. All right, well, no, yes. no, okay. okay. I take it back. It doesn't do nothing. It will restrain. It will sometimes restrain, but it won't yes. ever, ever turn flesh to stone. Literally never. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. If it does, it means the encounter was going so well anyway. Well, after you'd wasted a six level spell slot, that it didn't really matter, right? It was like, Unless, oh, some lackey that um, didn't impact his encounter anyway eventually failed three saves while the rest of the encounter happened, and I didn't take any damage. Huzzah! Unless you're trying to make a statue collection or something. Sure, if you want to cosplay as a gorgon, go nuts. But um, for the vast majority of us, you should just take any first level or higher spell that has any amount of status effect. If it restrains, paralyzes, stuns, uh, banishes, I don't know, polymorphs, I don't know, suggests that all will be better Webs. than this in almost every capacity. Yeah. Take web. Take uh, <laughs> anything that, like, web restrains. You might as well use that instead. It hits an area. Exactly. Like, do that. It's a second level spell. Don't ever, ever, ever cast this trash. It is. All right. Well, so we bad. listen. We cannot take for granted that our our viewers have seen us bitch about this spell many times before. So, let's go over exactly what's so bad about it. Okay. So how this is how the flushes that works. You attempt. To, you pick a creature. It makes a save throw. Um. Yes. If it it's con save. If it fails that con save, which many viewers also will astutely point out that is usually the best save monsters have is constitution. If it fails the initial, it is restrained and its body begins to harden. If it succeeds, nothing happens. This spell also requires you concentrate on it, which means you can't have other concentration effects up. You can't do anything else while this is happening. And a creature restrained... Them. Yes. A creature restrained by the spell makes another con save at the end of each of its turns. If it ever succeeds... The spell, if it ever succeeds three times, the spell ends. If it ever fails three times, it's petrified. You add them up. So you have, like, it fails round one, it succeeds round two, it fails round three, it succeeds round four. Round five, something will change. Usually, at minimum, three rounds is way too many to expect anything out. Because it's the round you cast this, then it's turn, and then three turns, or two turns after that, something might happen. Most of the time, it's more than that. Most of the time, it's at least four rounds before something happens. That is way too long for a creature that's just restrained, and the restrained condition only says 
that it has disadvantage on attack rolls, can't move, and has disadvantage on dexterity saving, or attack rolls against have an advantage. So it can still shoot things, it can still cast spells, it can still shoot breath, it can still do all of the rest of what it's doing. It's not removed from the fight by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's just restrained. Yeah. It is a really expensive version of that effect, and you shouldn't expect this to be a what like a way to kill something. Because if you take damage in those three to five rounds, if you, you know, if it happens to pass three of them and it does last the full duration. If you want to cast another spell that has concentration, if you want to do any other effects, this spell stops the restraint condition outright and is completely wasted on you. Even to get to realistically expect somebody to turn into stone using this spell, I mean, the battle was over three rounds ago. You're still, you know, spelling on him and, uh, you know, he's shooting arrows at you and your party and you're dodging. Yeah. There, are, Everybody's just waiting around no no absolutely not it, it it is a truly horrendous spell uh one of the worst it the, i will give it this credit it does something and there are spells yeah. we've talked about like find the path that sure don't do anything so you know Seems this right. is a better spell than find the path that's another yeah. six level comparison oh yeah that's six jeez that's six level that's six level for some reason I mean... Uh, shout out to iBite. iBite is like this, but blinds. Um, but you can kind of pick different conditions and make other things blind and sickened and stuff, or in panicked and stuff. So that one's also pretty terrible. Um, usually the problem with these is they're just there are much cheaper options that are better at doing this thing's jobs. Like hold monster, yeah. for example, is just way better than this because paralysis means it's not taking actions and you auto crit it, and that you're always going to have a way higher impact than this ever can. So, you know, also, if you fail, up. then uh, you know it right away and you don't have to keep wasting the entire encounter doing this. Yeah, just praying that you maintain concentration for long yeah. enough for it to matter while it can fight back. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Other shout out, True Seeing. I hate that spell. It's an awful spell. It's stupid. I don't like it, but it's not technically okay. worse than this. So, no. All right. Well, that was our list. Um. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Uh, what are your lists? What are your opinions of our lists? Uh, thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us uh, know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.